Hey everybody, Ben here from the new Cinder Blocks videos and today I'm back with another quick tip for all you acrylic painters out there. So I'm actually still in the middle of my week one move-in, as you can see with the sheer chaos that is here in the studio. But something just occurred to me as I was slowly moving things in, and that's that some people will use, in place of traditional uh, acrylic molding paste, some construction joint compound. Now, what is the difference between these two uh, exactly? Well, both are actually very similar in somewhat uh, in their ingredients. Uh, molding paste, particularly the stuff from Golden, is 100% acrylic poly polymer emulsion with some fine marble dust. So, two ingredients, basically. Uh, there's probably a little bit of water in here as well. The joint compound, if I can find the ingredients, they're not, they're not really uh, worried about you stealing their recipe because no one's painting with joint compound, at least not too many people. Ingredients. Instead of marble, the joint compound uses limestone, water, and uh, m water, mica, as well as uh, a few different types of vinyl emulsions rather than acrylic emulsions. So similar, definitely, uh, but how well do they hold up together and could you replace a jar of molding paste, with which one of these is probably like $20, with a five gallon bucket of joint compound, which one of these is also probably something like $20, but don't quote me on that, look it up yourself. So let's have a quick look at these. Okay, so pardon the camera angle here, but again, I'm just moving in, I don't have the space to set up the, the regular everything. So we're just going to do a couple of quick uh, mixes and uh, a couple of quick examples here on this piece of, uh, this is like a compressed particle chipboard um, cardboard. So regular uh, molding paste that you get, uh, you know, at the art store or, or an arts and crafts store, whatever you, whatever you have, nice, smooth, very buttery. Um, it also kind of takes the uh, shine out of any acrylic you add to it. Uh, we're just going to grab a little phthalo blue here, just on the side, and mix that in with this color as well. I'm not in my painting clothes, I'm trying to find a rag. Um, so we have just some of the regular paste, and then regular paste mixed with blue. And if you're familiar with uh, molding or modeling paste, you'll be familiar just with the general uh, consistency of that as well. Now anything with acrylic uh, polymer emulsion in it, it's going to adhere very well to us uh, to any kind of uh, gessoed or ungessoed support, such as cardboard, wood, or primed canvas, or even unprimed canvas. Now the joint compound should be a little more interesting. Now the texture of joint compound is significantly thicker and significantly rougher. It's actually, uh, if you could do a straight comparison, could be a little bit closer to Golden's light molding paste, uh, which I'll grab a little bit of that as well. And then mix that with the blue. I use the light molding paste uh, uh, quite often when I am uh, just doing uh, my regular rocks and mountains and things like that uh, in my regular painting, but the consistency of the joint compound is even thicker than that. It's a little bit heavier, and it's also uh, not quite as bright white. It's a little more of a gray. So just on the support itself, it seems to move and spread yeah, fairly well. Now we're going to mix some of that with color. Who knows what this will do? I have no idea. So far, I would say it's somewhat accepting the color, somewhat not. I feel like we're more tinting the uh, joint compound more than we are uh, really kind of well, we're like tinting it and straining and, and staining the, the material and not really mixing it. Um, but again, the two products are very, very similar. Now, one more time, I'll just hold this up to show you guys. Again, I don't have the setup for this right now. So, regular molding paste with blue, 
Light molding paste with blue. Joint compound with blue. Uh, now the light molding paste and the joint compound actually hold a more intense blue while the tr uh, traditional molding paste acts a little bit more like a white. Now this is going to vary a little bit depending on how much um, how much color you add versus the ratio of the color to the medium. Uh, but in general, they tend to look very, very similar. I think what is really going to be an interesting tell for us uh, going forward is how is this going to uh, dry in particular. So I have to come back tomorrow uh, and wait for this to dry. But leave your reactions of what you think is going to happen to the dried uh, materials in the comments below and we'll see if you're right. Okay, so it's been about 18 hours since uh, I did this whole test with the uh, molding paste and the joint compound. So as you can see, the uh, regular molding paste uh, dries to a nice solid matte finish. Uh, the light molding paste is a little bit more flexible, uh, but still has a nice sort of rough uh, appearance to it. Now the uh, joint compound has an actual uh, texture as well as uh, the perceived uh, faux texture. It is actually a little bit rough, both uh, the, just the, the plain stuff on, on the cardboard as well as the stuff mixed with uh, paint. Now, the question here is, can you use joint compound in place of molding paste? And the definitive answer I'm going to give today is maybe kind of depends on what your substrate is. Also keep in mind that uh, molding paste is an acrylic product. It is designed to dry like acrylic. Joint compound is designed to be uh, something that fills holes and cracks in your walls. Uh, so in and of itself it doesn't dry to a super firm finish. Regular molding paste can scrape on it. Light molding paste Maybe it doesn't hold quite as well, but it's going to come off as one piece. You can kind of carve away at it a little bit. Joint compound, when you do anything to it, even rub on it, turns into a fine powder. Same probably goes for the stuff we tinted with color. Well, tint it with color, it's a little more firm. I'm still getting a nice fine powder down here. So if you're going to use this stuff in place of molding paste, keep in mind that it definitely has some limitations. Well, yes, it's going to accept color to some degree. It's not designed to hold up uh, in terms of a fine art scenario. What you do with joint compound is you spread it on your walls, and then you cover it in latex paint. And then it will hold its shape and uh, consistency well, and it won't powder off. However, mixing uh, joint compound in with your know, acrylics, while it creates, yes, a very similar effect, is not going to have the same archival quality or longevity that a, an acrylic product does. So my suggestion to you is just buy the molding paste. Is it more expensive? Yes. But it's going to hold up a lot better, and it's going to accept uh, mixing with, it's going to accept the acrylics and uh, accept mixing it on a canvas and applying it to a canvas or really any other su support for substrate uh, much easier. You can try it for yourself if you want to. You can usually buy little jars of joint compound or stucco or something, but in the long term I would not suggest doing it uh, for a fine art acrylic piece. Now that said, I do think it could be interesting to create sort of a faux fresco with it by applying it uh, to a wall or a canvas and then painting on top of it. I think it could be an interesting way to create something that feels very old, but in the same sense is also very new. <clears throat> I personally wouldn't use it, and I personally wouldn't recommend it, but it's definitely an option out there depending on what you want to try with your acrylics. So I hope you found this little tip useful. I gotta actually clean the studio and set it up. Uh, here. So uh, subscribe for more art videos. And this has been from the new Cinderblock Studios. See you guys next time.